Hello everyone! So today I'm going to show you how to make a cowl or a neck warmer. Um, this will be nice and cozy for winter when we're leaving the house in this chilly chilly weather. So um, what you need is your flatbed knitting machine. You will want a needle, some sort of needle. I like the plastic needles to do my bind off. And you will need a latch tool. So the yarn I used for this is a Simply Karen yarn. Um, I really like these because they're really super soft. Um, and it's a paints, uh, so it has, it's just kind of variegated. Um, and this is a number four, it's a worsted weight yarn, so I'm using my chunky machine. Um, and the color is Sunset. So, um, in order to do this and make sure that it doesn't uh, roll up and stuff on us, is what we did is we did a, um, you can sort of see the pattern here, that there's five knits in a row and then there's two purl, then five knit and two purl again. Um, and so we did that on this machine by knitting all of our rows and then we went through and we, um, we took out a column of stitches and then we purl them up with our latch tool. That's why you'll need one of these. Okay, so this is um, an adult size. It would maybe fit a an older child as well. Um, I it's it's nice and big. It stretches because of the uh, the knit five purl two. It's nice and stretchy. Um, we did fold it over. That's what this top is. It's just a fold. And then we combined it here at the bottom. So this was a pretty quick project. The knitting itself only took about five minutes. <laughs> um, you know, the cast on didn't take long. The bind off didn't really take long like a regular bind off. Uh, what took the longest was doing the, the, the pearls, the hand manipulated pearl stitches. So that probably took almost an hour, not quite. Um, so just to give you a rough idea of how long this took and then the seaming together we did a mattress stitch on the side and then we um, just sewed it together on the bottom here and so that probably took another 10 to 15 minutes okay so that's about how long this takes so if you are trying to get out your knitting machine and looking for some easy beginner projects then subscribe below so you can see what our next project is um, and if you're looking for some quick and fast and easy Christmas ideas because it's not too far away and we know that knitting takes a little bit of time. So we've got some super quick projects for you uh, for Christmas. So check out that video. Okay, we are going to cast on 72 stitches for our cowl. I have from left 36 all the way to right 36 on my machine. I don't have a zero needle, but if you do, you'll have to adjust that. And we're going to cast on using an E-wrap cast on. So I will show you that. Okay, for our E-wrap cast on, we are going to make a slip stitch. We're going to place it over our first needle, tighten it up a little, and then we're going to wrap like an E. And I use my right hand to wrap and my left hand to hold the yarn. We're going to do that across our 72 stitches. Okay, after you get all of your needles wrapped, you're going to push them back. Make sure all your needles are pulled out. Um, and I hung my weights on. Uh, do that for your machine, however that works. And then we are going to just plain stockinette stitch until we get to um, about 12 inches of yarn. So your material is going to be weighted so it will stretch uh, the yarn some. So when you measure your work, try to make sure that uh, you're kind of lifting up your cast on comb or your weights so that you have a better idea of whether or not it's actually 12 inches. If it's a little bit shorter, that's probably fine for most people's necks. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it over and sew that together. 
So I am going to use Tension 5 on my machine and I will let you know what the gauge turns out to be for that. So let's get knitting. Make sure your row counter is set to zero when you begin. And when we are finished with all of our rows, we are going to go back and we're going to purl every other one so that our knitting doesn't curl so much. Not every other one. Every two out of five. <laughs> Make sure that your end stitches are knitting as you go. Uh, move your weights up when you need to and make sure that your yarn is flowing freely. Uh, when it gets tight, that's when uh, it will mess up with your tension. Okay, so I'm at about 12 inches. I went to row 70 and you can see how our knitting curls here. It really curls in on the edges. And so to get it to not do that, um, because after I take it off the machine, it will curl even more. Same thing with the ends. It will curl on the ends, uh, which a little bit of curl is okay, especially on the ends. Uh, but to get it to not do that, what we're going to do is we are going to do a knit five, purl two pattern, and that will help it to not curl. Okay, so in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to skip our end stitch we're going to skip these five knit stitches, and then we're going to pull out these two needles for purling. Then we'll have five that stay knit and two to purl, and that'll be like on the right side of the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let one stitch out all the way to the bottom of my work, and I'm going to try to avoid my cast on, uh, my E-wrap cast on. We wanna leave that the same. Okay, so here we are at the bottom of the work. And you can see that I hung a weight here, which actually I apparently didn't hang it over far enough. I'm gonna try just to catch my E-wrap cast on in my weight. So here we are at the last stitches. Now I'm going to put my latch tool in Oops. I guess I am going to have to catch my cast on in that one. Okay, so here we are at the very bottom. We are going to go through, and this bottom is going to be very hard to catch. If you want to go up, you know, five or 10 <laughs> knit stitches, that would be totally fine. We're going to, okay, so here's my loop. I'm going through it. I'm going past my latch. I'm catching the string above it. I'm coming back down, that closes my latch, and I'm pulling that loop through. So we're going to continue doing this all the way up. I go past my latch, I grab the loop above and close my latch, and pull the loop through. Okay, I will meet you at the top. Okay, so when I got to the top, I just put it back on the needle that it was on, and now I'm going to do the next one. So what I did down here at the bottom, is I already stuck my latch tool in. Sorry, you can't see that. I already stuck my latch tool in where I wanted it on the latch, the stitch that I wanted. So I'm just going to take it out down to there and hope to not lose my stitches this time. Like I said, you can just go down to, you know, leave five or 10 on the bottom. Uh, that will be totally 
fine and probably suggest it after I get done with this here. Okay, so back at the top, um, we are going to, so I put that back on this needle. So I'm going to skip five. Those are gonna be our knit on the right side of the fabric. And then I'm going to pull forward two um, and purl those up one at a time. And like I said, I am not, um, I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. That was just a big mess. <laughs> so I'm just going to go down I'm just going to go down to wherever is comfortable before it turns into a giant mess. And you're just pulling these out. I do have a weight at the bottom, you can see. And so I'm just going to stick my needle in here. This is up maybe, I don't know, three and that's just going to be good enough. Um, we're going to sew this up. No one will notice. Not to mention it's around your neck. So the bottom is going to be a little bit scrunched up anyway. So no need to stress about that. So I'm going to just continue to purl this to the top and do the next one. Then I'm going to skip five again and purl two. I'm going to continue that all the way across my work. And then we'll come back together. I will come back and show you what is next. I wanted to show you, I did add a weight over here on the side and that is making it easier to purl up and catch these stitches and I'm not pulling this fabric away um, quite as much. That's helping a lot. Okay, you can see at the bottom here how this knitting rolls up and if I take my weight off it might even roll a little bit more um, but where we have done the purl stitches over here if I take my weight off you can see that this doesn't roll at all anymore it's just nice and flat um, so that's why we're doing this this is what it accomplishes we're going to be sewing our sides together so we don't have to worry about this part um, of it rolling right now Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we're going to do a bind off. I'm going to go ahead and do a back, um, a back stitch bind off. And so I need to cut my yarn about three times the length of my work. Then I am going to use a plastic needle. I'm going to thread that. And we're just going to do a back stitch. So in order to do a back stitch, I want to pull that. We're going to pull our work out a little. And so I want to go through my first two loops first and get that um, as tight as I want it. That looks good. Okay, so now we are going to go through our first stitch, behind our second stitch, and through our third stitch. And we're just going to pull it through. And then we're going to go back to our second stitch, the one we went behind. We're going to go behind the next stitch and through our third. And we're just going to continue this pattern. Okay, all the so way we are at the end of our knitting, um, our end, the end of our project, and so we're going to just keep doing the pattern until you get to the last two stitches. So you're going in, behind, and out. Okay, so now for this last two, we're just going to go in the last, in the second one, and in the last one. And then we're just going to go in the last one. Okay, and that secures your project. And now you can take the whole thing off of your machine and I will show you how we're going to knit it up. Okay, so now we have this ribbed piece of material. 
I love these colors. So what we're going to do um, is we are going to make a tube. So these are our ends that are nice and rolly. <laughs> and so what we're going to do is make a tube. We're going to pull these together. And what I did, I just cut another piece of string. And what I'm going to do is just kind of tie it on here to the end. And this is what I'm going to use. And we are going to mattress stitch this up. So I'm literally just going to tie that on. I am going to make myself enough room so that I can um, sew this in at the end. Okay, so in order to do a mattress stitch, we are looking for the edge. Now remember, you have a pearl a purl stitch in here and on this side it's all knit but what we're looking for is just these very ends so in order to do the mass mat, um, mattress stitch I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to grab my first stitch and get that out of the way so that pulls my material together and now we are looking for this first knit row. So we're going to, I'm going to start on the end here and I'm, I'm going to grab this first bar that I see and I'm going to go through there. And then on the other side of my work, I'm looking for that first bar that is within this first uh, knit row. So you're kind of skipping this loopy stuff on the side and you're looking for that those first knit stitches. And you're just going to be pulling this all together. So we're going to the other side now and we're sticking our needle in that knit stitch and we're pulling it up to find the bar that's underneath. Then we're going to the other side and doing the same thing. You can see this is where I came out of the last one. So I'm going to put my needle in that hole and lift up to find the bar and pull through. And I will show you that close up. It's nice and close up that side so I'm going to the other side where my string came out I'm putting my needle in the hole where my string came out I'm lifting up to find that bar and I'm pulling my string through then I'm going to the other side this is where my string came out so I'm putting my needle in that hole Oops. I'm lifting up to find that bar and then we're gonna pull it tight. You do not have to pull it all tight um, as you go. You can wait until you've done a few stitches. So one more time, I'm going to go underneath this bar, pull it through, across, underneath, and pull it through. And you're going to go do that all the way to the end. I will meet you back here to sew our ends together. Okay, so our last step for our cowl now is to sew the end together. So we had a big tube and I just pushed the top of it into here. So now we have both ends meeting. It's folded up here. Okay, and we have a big hole in the middle. Okay, so what we're going to do to do this as I found my mattress seam it's together I'm just going to kind of overlap them because it doesn't really matter how this comes together as long as uh, it's all together and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go across to this side I'm going to make sure I'm catching uh, my top loop make sure this is all kind of unrolled when I'm grabbing these stitches and I'm just going to grab a stitch I'm going to go 
across to the other side and grab a stitch and then pull my yarn across and then I'm going to do it again so I'm going to try to go you know over to the next stitch and if you have a couple stitches in here that's fine just kind of going over and across and we're just closing these together nothing fancy okay we'll do that again you do want to make sure you're grabbing these top stitches here just kind of making sure that they're not rolled over okay and you're just going to keep working that until you are all the way across. Okay, so I finished my seam and so did my edges and that's what my seam edge looks like. 